In the last lecture, we learned how we can loop over a list using ng for directive and then render an HTML template for each item in that list in the web page. Now there, we looped over simple types like a list of numbers or a list of string. We did not loop over a list of complex types. For example, let's say I have an array and in that array, I have a list of products. And what I want is, I want to loop over that array. I want to get each product and then display their details in the web page. How can we achieve that? That's what we are going to learn in this lecture. So basically in this lecture, you're going to see another example of using ng for directive, but this time we are going to use it on a list of complex types. So let's go to VS code. Let me close these files here. We are not going to work in these files. And before I do anything, what I want is, I want to change this product list component name to maybe container. That's because inside this component, we are going to place all our other components like the course list, the search bar, the filter, all those things. So here I don't want to call it product list. I want to call it container component. Okay, so inside this product list, we also have these component files. I also want to change them to container component.css, container component.html, and container component.ts. And in there, I want to change the component name to container component instead of product list component. And then inside that container component, we will create our product list component. Now, Angular CLI does not provide us any command using which we can rename our component in all the places, but it would be good to have such option in Angular CLI. Anyway, we will have to do it manually. So we will have to change the folder name, the file names manually, also the class name manually, and then we will have to also change the component class name in the modules file. So let's go ahead and let's do that. In order to do that, since we are going to do it manually and these files are being used, Let's first go ahead and let's first stop the Angular CLI process. So for that, I can press Control C. Let me also clear the terminal here. So this one is done. Now we also need to close VS Code because otherwise we would not be able to rename the files and folders. So let's go ahead and let's close VS Code also. And here we are in our project directory. So in this directory, in this Angular card directory, we have the source folder. From there, let's go to app folder. And in there, we should have this product list folder. Here, let me go ahead and let me rename it. And I'll call it container. Then inside this folder, we have these files. I'm going to rename them as well. Okay, so we have renamed these files. Now let's go ahead and let's open VS Code again. Now let's open this container folder in there we have this container component.ts and here let's change the name of this component to container component okay and here also we need to specify the path of template url and also styles url so here i will simply call it container component.html and here container component.css and let's also call the selector as app container Okay, so this one is done. Now let's go to container component.html. Now here, Angular is not able to find out this app search component. That's because we have changed the folder names. So we can go to app module.ts and in there, instead of product list, we can say container. Let's do the same thing here. Now here, the name of the component is container component. And here also, the file name is container component. Now, all we have to do is we have to register this container component inside this declarations array. And that's it. Let's save the changes. Let's go ahead and let's run this Angular application again. For that, let's type ng serve command. And let's see if we have any compilation errors. So, in the app component.html file, it says product list is not a known element. So, let's go to app component.html. We close this container component here and in there we need to use app container because that's what the selector name is for the container component let's save the changes and let's go back to command prompt again and now you see the angle application has been compiled successfully let's go to the web page let's reload the page here and everything is working fine now so what we have done is we have changed the product list component 
to container component okay so basically at the top we have the top header component after that we have the header component and after that we are using the container component as you can see and inside that container component we have the search component now inside this container component we also want to have a product list component okay so let me go ahead and let me open terminal here let's clear everything and from the project folder we want to move to this container folder for that we can use cd command and there we can specify that from the source folder we want to go to app folder and in the app folder we have container folder and in that container folder we want to create a new component called product list so for that we can use ng generate command here we want to generate a component and let's call this component product list so that component has been created here you can see a folder called product list has been created from that folder let me go ahead and let me remove this spec.ts file here we have our product list component class the selector for this component class is app product list but i will simply call it as product list then this is the view template for this component class and this is the style sheet for that component class now let's go ahead and let's use this selector in the container component.html so after we have used this search component after that we want to display a list of products so for that here let's go ahead and let's use the selector of product list component if i save the changes currently in the html of this product list component which should have a paragraph so that paragraph should be rendered if we go to the web page you see that paragraph has been rendered now here what we want is we want to have a list of products and we want to render that list of products inside this product list component so let's go to vs code let me close all these files and let's open product list component.ts file in there i will create an array let's call it products okay and to that let's assign an array and inside this array we want to have a list of products in order to save some time i have already created this list of product so here we have that list of products as you can see here also i am creating a products property and that is assigned with an array and inside that array we have a list of product objects okay so let me go ahead and let me copy this array from here let's go back to vs code and let me replace this product array with the product array which we have just copied okay and we don't need to use const keyword here so let me go ahead and let me remove it now currently this products array is an array of anonymous type because here we are not specifying any type for this products array but later we will create a class called products and we will specify the type for this products array as that product class so now what we want is we want to loop over this products array and we want to display the details of each of the products which we have here okay so as you can see each product has an id a name description brand gender category size color price is in inventory basically it is like in stock property which we used earlier items left image url and slug now we are not going to use all these properties but some of the properties we want to display in the web page when we are rendering the product list so let's go to product list component.html here instead of having a paragraph element let's write some html so let's first create a div and for that div let's specify a css class and let me go ahead and let me add some css styles for this div so in the product list component.css these are the css styles which i want to add for that div okay let's go back to our product list component.html and in there now we want to display the product name the product image the category of the product its price and other details and in order to show those details i have already created an html template so here is that html template let me copy this html template i will share this with you guys so that you can also use it let's go back to vs code and inside this div let's go ahead and let's type that template 
now for now i will comment this div we don't need it for now and here i have used some placeholders and in place of those placeholders we want to show the actual value for example here we want to show the price of the product we want to show the name of the product the gender the product can be used by the category of the product and the brand of the product so what we want to do is we want to loop over each item of this product sorry we want to get that item that item is going to be an object and from that object we want to use some of its properties and which template do we want to repeat we want to repeat this template okay the above div it is going to contain all the list of products but this div here it represents one product so this is the template which we want to repeat for each of the products and that's why we are going to use ng4 directive on this div so we know that ng4 is a structural directive so we should start it with an asterisk and to that we are assigning a set of double quotes and inside that double quotes we can write any typescript expression so here what we will do is we will create a variable we will call it maybe prod of and then here we want to loop over this product array this products property so let's copy it let's go ahead and let's use it here so in this way we are looping over this product array so for each item inside this prod variable we will get the product object for example for the first iteration in this prod variable we will get this first product object in the same way for the second iteration we will get this product object in the prod variable so using this prod variable we can access the properties of that product object so let's go ahead and let's do that let me copy this prod variable from here and the first thing which we want to do here is we want to set the product image so if i go to one of the product objects here maybe the first object you will see that there we have this image url property and this image url contains the image of the product so we want to use this property so here i'm going to use property binding for that i'm going to wrap this source attribute within square brackets like this and in here i will use the prod variable which is storing our product object dot image url okay in the same way here we want to display the price of the product so here i will use string interpolation syntax and in there i will say prod dot and let's see if we have the price property so here we have the price property we want to use that price property then for the name we have this name property so let's go ahead and let's use that again i will use string interpolation syntax here and in there i will say prod dot name then here we want to use the gender property again i will use string interpolation syntax and i'll say prod dot gender here we want to use the category property okay and here we want to use the brand property finally here we also want to show the total number of color options which is available for that product and if i go to the product array there you will see that we have this color property for each product and it is an array so we want to show how many options of color for that product is available for that in the string interpolation syntax i will again say prod dot color and since this color is an array on that we can use the length property and it will return us the total number of color options available for that product okay with this let's save the changes and let's see if it is working or not so let's go to the web page and you will notice that those products are rendered so the product image the price of the product the name of the product then gender category and brand and also the number of color options available so all those details have been rendered here but we also want to design it a little bit this here this list does not look good so in order to design this product list i have also pre-written some css so let me go ahead and let me copy that css this css we have already applied on the outer div so we are going to copy this css from here let's go back to vs code let's go to product list component.css and there let's go ahead and let's paste it let's save the changes now let's go to the web page and here you can see the product list has been rendered let me go ahead and let me zoom out a little bit to 100 percent so here you can see the product list has been rendered 
okay it looks good now here i want to move this list in center so let's go ahead and let's write some css for that and we are using this product list component inside the container component so we need to go to that container component.html there we are using it and we have placed it inside this ecart product container div right so let's go to the css here and in there let's change the css a little bit and from here let's remove this css from button element with this let's save the changes let's close these files let's go to the web page and now it looks good actually we can move it a little bit more to the right so let's go back and let's add padding maybe to 20 vh let's go back to the web page and now it looks okay so in this lecture we learned how we can loop over an array of complex type here we have an array of products which stores a list of object and we are looping over that array of objects using this ng4 directive now here we have used this ng4 directive on this div because it is this div which we want to repeat for each item which we have inside this products array and for each iteration here this prod will be assigned with the current element on which this ng4 is looping over now here we can also get the index of the element if we want for that all we have to do is we have to create a variable we can maybe call it i equals index okay so this index will give us the index of the current element on which this ng4 is looping over and if you want you can go ahead and you can use this index anywhere in your code for example here after this one let me go ahead and let me add another i element and there let's use the index so we are storing that index inside this i variable let's go ahead and let's use it let's save the changes let's go back to the web page and you will see 0 1 2 so basically in an array the index starts from 0 so for the first element the index is 0 for the second element the index is 1 for the third element the index is 2 and so on so those index numbers you can see here so in this way we also have access to the index of the current element on which the ng4 directive is looping over all right so this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day